coming. We um, want to start off today just with a, a little bit of a commentary regarding uh, the closure of the Israel Keys case and, and giving a, a thank you uh, to our law enforcement folks, uh, the Anchorage Police Department, the, the attorneys involved, the FBI, the law enforcement officials in the other states that were all involved in this and a uh, terrible tragedy for our community and for other communities as well. And over the last few days, we found out just how extensive uh, uh, the, the crimes that were committed were across the nation. And it's nice to have closure on this. Uh, and again, just really want to thank all the men and women who worked so hard. Uh, our department worked many, many hundreds of hours of overtime uh, to help bring this case to a closure. And um, we'd like to have gotten more information from Mr. Keyes before his uh, suicide. But uh, again, I think as a community and for other communities, we're just thankful that uh, uh, someone like that is no longer with us in society. Uh, on a happier note, uh, we've just received another accolade that uh, we're proud about. And uh, livability.com is uh, named Anchorage a top 10 best winter vacation destination. In fact, uh, we were named number one. And uh, they weren't here this week, obviously, or last week, but uh, yeah, we're number one. Spokane is number two, followed by Minneapolis, Traverse City, Reno, Waukesha, Wisconsin, Missoula, Montana, Bangor, Maine, Concord, New Hampshire, and Casper, Wyoming. So we beat out all those other fine cities to uh, get that designation, so we're proud about that. Um, Don's shaking his head over there. I thought, what? It's a, yeah. Um, new thing that we've developed is uh, through the help of our IT department and a group of volunteer techies, um, Anchorage citizens can now make a difference one fire hydrant at a time. A local group of community-minded technologists have created uh, Anchorage Adopt a Hydrant. And this is a new free web application that allows people to adopt hydrants in their neighborhood. And they can make sure that they're accessible, particularly if there's a neighborhood emergency. As we know in our climate, sometimes they get snowed in and sometimes they get iced in. And so just like with our Adopt a Road campaign or in the summer we have Adopt a Flower Basket campaign, uh, you can now adopt a hydrant. And uh, you can go to muni.org and find out uh, just how you can adopt a hydrant and make sure your neighborhood is kept a little bit safer. Um, the main thing we want to talk about today, though, is as you know, uh, last year at this time we were just concluding the first phase of our ed Mayor's Education Summit. And we started off by uh, convening 100 of the uh, leading citizens in town who have a stake in education, whether it's university presidents or uh, school principals, school administrators, teachers, students, uh, parents with kids in school, private school owners. So we had a, a great cross-section. We brought in seven of the leading experts from around the nation on education reform. And uh, we pledged at that time that uh, when we were done that this would not just be a report sitting on a shelf that we wanted to truly see if there were some outcomes that were achievable and then put an effort into helping our leaders uh, make those outcomes come to fruition. So um, what we're here to talk about today is the formation of a new nonprofit called Education Matters, Inc. And my former budget director, Cheryl Frasco, is the executive director of Education Matters, Inc. And um, she's going to come up and tell us a little bit more. But we also have this is a collaboration. It's not something that any one person or one group can do. And we have Commissioner Hanley, our Commissioner of Education for the State of Alaska, uh, Don Vance, President of APU, uh, Ed Graff from the Anchorage School District, Don Smith from the school board are all here. So if, uh, if you'd care to join us at the podium, uh, please come. And um, Cheryl will kind of give you a little bit more information about Education Matters, Inc. and what some of our goals are. Coming up, guys. It's a and all three, uh, Ed and, and Commissioner Hanley, and President Bance, were all involved in the in the summit. So it's uh, we really appreciated your input. In fact, uh, uh, you've got some airtime on our nine-minute video that shows on uh, on a, the outcome of the education summit. So Cheryl, I'm going to turn the podium over to you, and you can kind of tell what the initial goals are of of the nonprofit. Okay. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, as the Mayor said, our uh, this new nonprofit organization is uh, created specifically to follow up on implementation of the recommendations that came out of the Education Summit. And uh, we're not here to tell the school district how to do its business. We're here to help. And uh, as the mayor said, we have partners in this. And we look forward to working with the Anchorage School District, as well as the Department of Education, as well as our local universities. Um, one of our first projects is going to be uh, the Great Teacher Initiative. 
and uh, we're in the process of designing uh, a series of symposiums that will really examine um, what it means to be a great teacher. What are the characteristics of those teachers where students are performing so well? And the mayor's talked a lot about Finland, and that's one of the models that we're going to look at and have a distinguished uh, scholar from Finland who will be joining us in late April for the first kickoff symposium. So we'll have some uh, more to announce about that as uh, the month, months draw closer. So with that, I'd, I'd welcome any comments that our partners may have. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot because I didn't, uh, we didn't exactly rehearse this. Um, so, so if you do, Commissioner Hanley. Well, thank you, Cheryl, and thank you, Mayor, for, for your efforts in this. Um, making a difference in the lives of our kids is really, it, it can't be done by one person. It can't be done by the state, and it can't be done simply uh, at a district or a city level. It really takes uh, a group. And so I am thrilled to be able to come alongside of the vision that uh, Mayor Sullivan has put forward um, for Anchorage students, which I think will have an impact, uh, a rippling effect um, outside of Anchorage and across the state. So I'm, I'm, I'm really anxious. I'm excited to see what we've done so far, what you've done so far, and more excited to see what's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Ed? Are you done? Thank you, Cheryl, and uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Anchorage School District is committed to ensuring success for all students, and I think any time we can have a broader conversation with the community, the state, and um, certainly the mayor's office about what we do to support education for all students, um, we're excited about it. So look forward to continued conversation and, and seeing what outcomes we can make happen with this effort. Well, I really enjoyed the uh, mayor's educational summit, and I look forward to the ongoing conversation if you does provide teacher education, so we're a big player in that piece, and we look forward to being a part of this effort. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, you may. Um, and as um, um, Ed was saying, one of the things that the Education Summit did bring to Anchorage was looking at ways in which we could engage uh, citizens in talking about important issues as input to the decisions that ultimately would get made, be made. And so that's a model that we want to continue to use with the work of education. Education matters so that citizens aren't a reactionary group. Instead, they have the constructive input uh, to decisions that ultimately get made by the policymakers. Thank you, Cheryl. Thanks, everyone. Well, we look forward to uh, particularly the, the first segment, which is uh, in April, uh, a gentleman named Posse Salberg, uh, expert on the Finnish uh, teaching system and how they've m made some of the remarkable progress they've made. And I think it's going to be a great symposium. We look to literally have... Uh, huge involvement, not only from the educational community, but from the citizens as a whole. And I think it's going to be a great kickoff to really examining our, our best and most important resource. That's our human resource. And um, I've said before, once the, the last bit of oil and the last bit of gold is mined in this state, uh, our human resource is going to be uh, what we are going to count on for the future of Alaska. So we're very excited to, to have uh, the starting and, and the progress we're going to make. So thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yep. That concludes that portion. Please note that um, next week we won't have a press briefing per se, but we will have a, a press conference where uh, Captain Quinn of the USS Anchorage will be in town and he'll be available for interviews. Uh, and then also we will be um, awarding the nonprofit organizations from the Mayor's Charity Ball uh, with their checks and drawing the names for next year's Charity Ball. So that'll be next week. And with that, if you have any questions, we'll gladly try and answer. Yes, Rosemary. Well, um, as a nonprofit, uh, uh, Education Matters is dependent upon uh, contributions, donations, in-kind support, uh, volunteerism, and so all of those angles, like any nonprofit, will be explored for sustainability of the effort. Are you personally going to go raise money for it? Um, I, I will be an assistant, if you will. My, my goal is to you know, kind of lend my support as the guy who kind of got this kicked off. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, I stay involved, but uh, but Cheryl Frasca is the executive director, and like with all executive directors, uh, they have that joint mission of delivering a service and at the same time uh, securing the funds necessary for to be sustainable. Um, what what do you say to people who might be concerned that it's just going to be more talk, that nothing might, concrete will happen? 
Well, I think we've already seen some some great results. Uh, you talk to Mr. Graff from the school district. You know, they've already working towards the Common Core standards, which significantly raised the bar on uh, uh, student expectations, and that's a great first step. Uh, we set the fifth lowest bar in the nation for what we call proficient in uh, our student performance, and to go to the Common Core standards really raises the bar uh, to a much higher level. And I know Commissioner Hanley is working with his group on raising the uh, uh, standard for all Alaska schools as well to something very similar to the Common Core. So I think uh, there's already been great progress. And the main thing is uh, I think if you can measure progress by the awareness that's been created in this community about uh, how we need to improve, I, I think that's a great accomplishment already. But we're, we're going to keep moving down the path of, uh, of trying to make sure that we are partners in assisting our, our, uh, our school folks in achieving their mission. And I have one more question. How is this group going to be related to the city? Uh, no relation to the city. It's an independent nonprofit with a board of directors. Uh, there will also be a board of governors of some of our leading citizenry who will uh, provide guidance uh, to, to the nonprofit. Is the board of governors kind of the operating side of it? No, uh, the board of directors will be the operating side. That's a small board of uh, three or four people. And then the board of governors, I think, will be 12 to 15 people, where just like with the summit itself, we're trying to get a cross-section of folks from uh, the education sector, the business sector, uh, and, and making sure that uh, we get good input from a, a good diverse group of, of very qualified people. Have, have any funds been raised uh, yet? Do they have an office? Is there a place where people can contact if they're interested in becoming involved? Uh, I know that uh, we have had uh, some meetings with people who funded the initial summit, and so far the response has been very, very good. Uh, we're anticipating that uh, there will be a successful fundraising effort over the, the next few months. And um, But I don't think you're going to see uh, maybe a set office at this stage. Most of the work will be done again, through community-type events, whether it's the symposium from Posse Salberg or our community dialogues like we've had before. And you mentioned Finland, um, this cooperative, cooperative uh, relationship with Finland and having mm -hmm. guests here. Why Finland, and, and why are you going on this in this particular route? Well, only because Finland's the number one country in the world in education. And um, they uh, accomplished it over a, a decade or so, uh, where they, as a culture, they, they literally changed the culture of their entire country and they decided that since they weren't strategically located like Norway or uh, didn't have the oil and gas wealth of, of Norway or some of the other countries, that their human resource would be what they focused on developing. And so one of the key elements that they accomplished was they really upgraded the status of teachers and the training of teachers. And that's why uh, having Mr. Salberg coming to town in April is going to be, I think, very informative because I think you'll see that um, the teacher training in Finland is much more rigorous than what we do here in the United States. And um, by the time they actually get into the classroom through a very, very competitive process, you find that really only the best of the best get into a classroom in Finland, and it's made all the difference. And when will ordinary citizens begin to start seeing something concrete out there in the community, um, you know, projects that they can get involved with or an office that they can call the phone number of? Sure. Um, I'll let Cheryl kind of answer the last part of that, but again, I think uh, you'll see a lot of information about the symposium, and that'll be the first opportunity. We're going to ho hopefully have it in a place where it's large enough where anyone who is interested can attend, and uh, I think it'll be very, very informative. But I'll let Cheryl answer about how to communicate. We do have a website, anchorage-education.com, and contact information, email, and phone number is on the website, and then we will continue to update on projects. As uh, the, we're currently working on a work plan, and as details and are uh, finalized, we'll get the information up on the website. And a little, can you repeat the details about the symposium? What people can expect there? Well, what the first one is, um, it's called the Great Teacher Initiative, and we're going to be examining the characteristics of what constitutes a great teacher. How do you know when you have one? You know, we want those that are producing great student performance. What are the nature of those teaching skills? And so that's the first focus. And then the next will be looking at um, how do you then train and develop, you know, professional development, um, principals, roles, uh, other aspects of how do you maintain great teachers. And then the third is likely to be something about, well, let's design a program for Anchorage. 
with what we know. So, so again, it's a continuum of work, um, and it all serves as input into um, a proposal. Uh, it's likely that it will probably involve the state of Alaska uh, and the Department of Education, so it's important to have Commissioner Hanley be part of this. So, so it's just working through a very important but complicated, at times it seems, process. Any other questions? Sure. All right, well, thank you very much. Appreciate it, everybody.